In this video, I'm going to show you how I use a tape emulation plugin as a compressor. Not only are you going to hear what it sounds like, I'm also going to show you visually what it is actually doing to your signal. Now, the plugin I'm using for this demonstration is the Tone Boosters Ferox version 3, which is among the many high quality plugins Tone Boosters gives us for free. And I'm also going to be using my usual a drum loop. Now, unlike a lot of my previous videos, I won't be going into total detail of all the controls on the plugin. Instead, I will be concentrating on the three controls that are going to give us our effect. And the three controls that I'm going to be using are, first off, drive, compress, and saturate. And I may or may not be using the output gain, just, you know, as a makeup gain. I've got all my other controls on here pretty much set to zero. I mean, feel free to pause the video to check how I've set the plugin up if you like. And then of course, get back to me. Now, when I'm trying out tape emulation plugins, I anticipate two things. One is color. In other words, it alters the tone of the audio by adding in new harmonics. And two, I anticipate compression. With old analog tape decks, the harder you drove them, the more they compressed the signal. So let's first of all see what additional harmonics each of our three chosen controls is going to give us. What you're looking at here is I have a 100 hertz tone going into Ferox, and from Ferox then it's going through a spectrum analyzer, so it's a 100 hertz tone. Let's start with our drive control, keep an eye on the spectrum analyzer and see what happens. Okay, not doing as yet. Let's push it a bit harder. Okay, so at around two o'clock on a clock face, we are starting to get harmonics from the drive control. Next, let's look at the compressed control. This is measured in percentage, just as a matter of interest. Let's go. Ah, very quickly, we're getting harmonics from this one. Two and a half percent and the harmonics are already kicking in. Great. Finally, let's go to saturate or saturation. We're at 12 o'clock, nothing doing. And all the way up, it's still not doing anything. So what's happening here? Well, basically you need to engage the drive. So let's push our drive up. 11 o'clock or thereabouts should do it. Now let's use our saturation control. Yet again, up around 11 o'clock. Now we are actually starting to see some harmonics. So of course, from that, we realize that for saturation to do anything, the drive control has to be doing something. Now let's see how these controls affect our signal dynamically. So what I've got going on here is I'm gonna be playing drums. We're not gonna hear them for the moment playing the drums through Ferox, and then the signal's been fed into this plugin called Sculpto. And this is just showing us what our WAV file looks like. The advantage with the plugin is that as we adjust drive and so forth on here, it will be reflected in real time, the changes that we make. So let's play it back. And first of all, I'm gonna set drive ah, to around 11 o'clock. And now I'm gonna go in with my saturation. So what's happening here is we've got two very prominent snares here with very prominent transients. And as we introduce saturation, you can see those transients that have been pushed down more and more. So we're getting compression here. Now let's see what we can do with the compression control. Okay. What we're looking at here is it's not necessarily more compression, but it is a thickening up of the signal. So what this is telling me really is that I'm going to use drive and saturate for my compression and then the compressed control, I'm just going to use to get extra color, extra harmonics, should I want them. Okay, that's enough looking. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. 
So let's have a quick listen first to our drum loop. Okay, I'm going to set my drive first off to around 11 o'clock. And then as I'm playing back, I'm going to introduce saturation, which of course is going to give us compression. Okay, I'm not going too crazy here. Drive and saturation are both around 11 o'clock. We're getting a nice bit of compression from that. Now, let's use our compressed control to get a little bit more color going here. Let's have a listen to how this sounds. Okay. I'm hitting around 8.2% on the compressed control. We're getting a really nice, thick, compressed sound. Let's hear before and after. I'm going to start with the compressor engaged. As I'm playing back, as always, I'll switch it in and out. Okay, we're getting a nicely compressed fat sound. Now, of course, if you think that you might be losing just a little bit too much punch, why not set up Ferox as a parallel compressor? And that's what I've done here. I've just copied Ferox to another track, which I've called Parallel, and I've got the exact same settings that I've just had. I've set up a send from our drum track to the parallel track, and I'm now going to turn off Ferox on that track. So what we're going to be adding in is the parallel track. So let's play back and have a listen to how this sounds. So by using it in parallel, I managed to bring back in some of that punch that we may have lost that we didn't want to lose during compression. Now, this is what I can get from the Tone Boosters Ferox version 3. Now, of course, other tape emulation plugins are going to give a different results. You really need to experiment with them to get the best results, of course. As always, I will leave you a link in the description where you can download all these Tone Boosters version 3 plugins for free. I will also leave a link to my courses page on my website so you can check out my courses. And do bear in mind, if you use the link to buy my courses, you can get up to 85% off the normal price. As always, thank you for watching my video. I really do appreciate you being here. And I will, of course, see you in the next video.